So here is the then uh, first phase of his work then was the one that he set up the complete polyphase systems of generation, generation utiliz in utilization of the power as we know it today. And you saw these demonstrations of the rotating magnetic field here that he made and the standard induction motor which with a co -cam. Now, he went to other things. It was uh, 1888 that he had uh, major patents. It was uh, in, uh, in this field. And uh, it was very early in 1895 already, from 1891 to 1895, there was the construction of the big project that uh, Westinghouse won over Edison Company, and that was the Niagara Power Plant. That was the first actual demonstration at the megawatt level, at the very high power level of the utility of it. In fact, there were several bidders in Tesla's uh, system, and Westinghouse won. They built the first uh, power plant in Niagara, and they were transmitting this with the polyphase system, transmitting the power some 20 miles down the road to Buffalo, where they had the big electrochemical power plants which required for electroplating and all other uh, electrolysis and other operations that required a lot of uh, currents. So that was the, then uh, they harnessed the Niagara Falls and utilized it. Later on at the end, I will show some uh, videotape of, uh, of the Niagara Falls. It's really uh, fantastic when you go there and see this immense power. And that's really what, uh, when he was a small child, that he envisioned and he said, I'm going to one day harness the, this tremendous power of the water which exists and which is being basically wasted, not utilized. And he, true to the fact, he eventually did it. Now, here comes the second phase of his work. He realized in this war of the currents, he realized that uh, there was a <coughs> tremendous opportunity in AC, not only because of polyphase system that he invented, and they essentially set up the system of 60 hertz and 110 volts or so, but that DC is uh, rather dull and boring because DC is only one frequency. When you think of uh, AC, not only do you have 60 hertz, but you have a, um, 100 hertz, uh, 1 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, and so on. You have a higher and higher frequencies. In fact, he was the first one who made the mechanical generator with uh, many poles, some, uh, some 100 or so poles, 132 poles. And he was creating, in this generator with so many poles, he was creating the frequencies on the order of 30 kilohertz. And he was experimenting, he started to experiment with, the, with the generating the high power, high frequency currents. In fact, at one of these demonstrations that was very famous that he gave only a few lectures where he made demonstration of his uh, inventions, he demonstrated how the high frequency current is not harmful for uh, human beings. Because one of the big contentions that, Tesla, that Edison made is that AC kills better than a DC. <laughs> and of course, to dispute that fact, he made this AC generator, and he actually made, just to imagine uh, himself generating this uh, 30 kilohertz, few kilowatts of the power, and he actually connected himself in a circuit. And by connecting himself in a loop, he also had the two iron bars which were melting. There was a lot of power there, but none of that was harmful because the high frequency current has a tendency to go on the surface, that so-called skin effect. And the higher the frequency, the shallower is the depth on which the current uh, uh, goes through. So give you an example at uh, some 300 kilohertz frequency, the depth of the current which goes through is only 0.1 millimeter. At 30 kilohertz, it goes by square root of frequency, so it's a, a little bit higher. But basically, all the current goes on the surface, and it cannot get to your heart or your vital organs, and it only has this tingling effect. OK? <laughs> <laughs> I still wouldn't try it, though. So <laughs> I believe in it, but I wouldn't try it. You know, I have only one life. You know? <laughs> But he, he believed, uh, and he tried it, and he did it. So anyway, he was melting these iron bars. But this was impractical. This is very impractical way to make the high frequency, because you are limited how many mechanical poles you can make to get the 30 kilohertz or 300 kilohertz. So he was looking for a device which will be capable of generating much higher frequencies without mechanical limitations. And that's where he came up with the Tesla coil. And that's what you see next here. And in fact, that's uh, where he started making experiments with the high frequency, high power currents. And also, he started also toying with the power uh, transmission without wires. But first, he came up, and I'll show you some slides, with uh, basically two years prior to Marconi, he came up with a system of uh, basically a uh, coil, aerial, uh, earth wire, and then uh, <coughs> which is transmitting station, receiving station. And he was able to show that he can transmit the signal and light the bulb on the other side remote control. In fact, in Madison Square Garden, 
he had made a little, I'll show you a demonstration uh, later of that uh, on the slides. He showed the little boat, which was radio control, that he could transmit the signals and in fact pilot the boat rather such that he could direct it, you know, people from the audience could uh, ask in which direction they want to go and he would just uh, change it and control it and remotely control it. So this was the beginning of robotics. This is what he'd been, done two years prior to Marconi. And it was eventually, he got the priority on that in 1943 when the Supreme Court ruled in favor of his patents having priority over Marconi's. But of course, of course Marconi got all the glamour of being uh, the first who started the radio transmission song. He was actually the first one after Tesla and the first one who actually very successfully, uh, if you will, commercialize it. Okay. And uh, in fact, it was Marconi who obtained the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1909. And it was reported that in 1912, Nobel Prize was to be shared by Tesla and Edison. And uh, in fact, uh, it was reported in New York Times. And uh, the story goes that quite likely that was true, but uh, speculations go that whether Tesla declined the Nobel Prize because he considered himself, in fact, that was very often uh, well known, that he distinguished himself and didn't call him himself an uh, inventor. He said, I'm discoverer of new principles. And I hope what I demonstrate here with this polyphase system and rotating magnetic field, that it's really a tremendous principle involved in it. And uh, whereas he called inventors and Edison and others that tinkerers who would play with it until <laughs> get something to work. <laughs> anyway, uh, in 1912, uh, he didn't get a Nobel Prize. It went to some uh, other physicist in Europe, and uh, he never got the recognition for it. In fact, uh, uh, the, one of the saddest things is that the, the highest recognition he got in his lifetime was the, the Edison Medal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in 1917, because in 1917, uh, he, uh, some friends of Ed, uh, Edison established this Edison Medal as highest honor for electrical engineering contributions, and he was asked to accept the Edison, Edison Medal for that year. Initially, he refused. He was a proud man. He certainly knew where his contributions are and how he's set apart from Edison. And now he's to receive Edison Medal. But uh, one of his uh, contemporaries there who uh, invented some of these uh, circle diagrams, he actually uh, talked to him and Tesla changed his mind and came, and came to that meeting and accepted the Edison Medal. That shows uh, what kind of man he was. Anyway, let's go now to the high frequency work and uh, let's uh, demonstrate this first. For this, I usually like to, as I said, I'm, I believe it, but uh, I like to have uh, some assistance here. Let's, uh, <laughs> usually what I like to do is, let me wear my glasses, I like to select some good looking girl from the audience. <laughs> Anyone volunteers? Let's see. 